for what you're about to receive. May the Lord make you truly thankful.
Mr. Solvay. Liberal terms. Five pounds. Well, as a matter of fact, I was needing a board. Very good. Five pounds, please. If you don't mind, cash upon the liking, Mr. Bumble. Cash upon the liking. Mrs. Sowerberry? What is it? Would you have the goodness to come here a moment, my dear? Well, what is it? What you want? I have told Mr. Bumble that we may consider taking in this boy to help around the shop. Dear me! He's very small! Oh, um, yes, but he'll grow, Mrs. Sowerberry. He'll grow. <laughs>
you want the ball back on. Do start kicking your superiors. I don't suppose you know who I am then? No, sir. I can't say I do. I'm Mr. Nova Claypole, and you're under me, you hardy young scallywag.
running away from the beak. You must be. The what? Now don't tell me you don't know what a beak is, Miss Flash, mate. A beak's what a bird's got. My eyes. How green. <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. Oliver. Twist. Stop. Oh, cool. Blimey. I'll get it. Quiet, boys. I hope I shall have the honor of your intimate acquaintance, my dear. Nice to meet you. You must be very tired. We'll save you the trouble of emptying these. Just have 
curiously made. Ingenious workman. Anything on the back. Very ingenious. <laughs> you are Charlie. No sense. Well, they're very nice ones. Very. Pink and purple. <laughs> <laughs> you embroider them too well, though, Charlie. Swap the pink at the initials with a needle. You need to know how to do this too, over my dear. Won't he, boys? Yeah. Yeah. But in the meantime, you learn how to make what it's like dodging Charlie here. You like that, wouldn't you? Oh, yes, sir. If you teach me. Yes, sir. Certainly, my boy. No fee. Just do everything that Dodger and Charlie do. Make him your models. Especially Dodger. He's going to make a right little bill of sights one of these days. Now then, it's my handkerchief for truth on my side pocket. Yes, sir. I don't see the corner. Well, see if you can take it out without my feeling it. Just like you saw the others do.
Apologies. Oh, ladies, I forgot. You must meet our new lodger, Mr. Oliver Twist Esquire, Nancy and Bet. Charles.
struggle with you. You have to make a start somewhere, Oliver, my dear, and believe me, you couldn't make a fine start. <coughs> Good luck on your first job, my dear. I'll be waiting for you here when you come back.
game was up with us, the game will be up with us good many more. And things might come out rather worse for you than they would for me, my dear. What?
brought him here to make what amends I could. But I must confess, I find myself strangely attached to the child. He's deceiving you, my good friend. He has had a fever. What of that? Fever's not peculiar to good people, are they? Bad people have fever sometimes, don't they? He stole your pocket handkerchief, didn't he? Then he'll steal more, sir. But he didn't. Yes, what is it? The books you ordered from the bookseller have come, sir. Ah, yes. Has the bookseller gone? I'm afraid so, sir. Oh, I particularly wish for some books to be returned today. Send all of them with them. He'll be sure to deliver them safely, you know. But if he does, I'll eat my head. Yes, sir. Please let me take them for you. Oh, yes. Very well. If you wish, you shall. Now, I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to take those books and say that you've come to pay the four pounds and send them to Brownlow's. Here's five pounds. There's no need to rush, but I expect you back in ten minutes. It's just on the road. Very good, sir. Now, let us see you, Mrs. Bedwin. Ten minutes. <laughs>
I'll give him a twist. All right, Bill, leave him. We're here now. We'll dodge out all of us back. Look at his dog's bacon. Super fine cloth. And beautifully cut. It's a real gentleman thing. Ha! Delighted to see you looking so well, Oliver, my dear. Why didn't you write and say you were coming? Kind of we would have prepared something warm for supper. What the devil? It's mine, Bill. Mine. You keep the books. If that is mine, mine and Nancy's, that is, I'll take the boy back again. This is hardly fair, Bill. Hardly fair. Is it, Nancy? Fair or not fair, and no not tell you. Give it here, as Richard sold the skeleton. You keep the books. Start alone. You can't keep the books. <laughs>
just a reminder to it, yes? Oh, well, Mr. Sarbury, the undertaker, took one of the months for five pounds. You mean to say that you sold a hundred animal for five pounds? Well, no, Mrs. Bumble, she actually authorized the sale. <laughs> <laughs> really? Then I will see to it that neither of you are employed in a situation of trust ever again. You may leave my house! I hope this little circumstance will not deprive me of my parochial office. Indeed it will, and you may see yourself well off besides. Well, it was Mrs. Bumble. She would do it. That is no excuse. You and I on the occasion when the boy was sold, and indeed you're the more guilty of the two in the eye of the law. The law supposes that your wife has to your direction. If the law supposes that, then the law is an ass. If that is the eye of the law, then the law is a bachelor. And the worst I wish the law is I may be open by experience. By experience! Look! <laughs>
play possible. From sound to makeup, we couldn't have done it without them. We'd especially like to thank our, our um, director, Ms. Foxcroft. <laughs> I know some 